Hey kitties! So today I am going to be doing a story time video on something that happened to me in high school which I feel is very important to talk about. So let's get started. Pink Speaks. Okay, so this happened in grade 10, which I feel like everything happened to me in grade 10. Grade 10 was quite an overwhelming year for me. A lot of bad things happened, great things happened. But this one I feel is one of the most traumatic things that happened to me in my life. I will say right off the hop, if you are sensitive with sexual abuse or anything along those lines, then definitely click out of the video now if this is a trigger for you. So I am making this video solely to try to help you guys. I'm not doing this for views. I'm not doing this to make up a story. This is a 100% honest, real, true story that happened to me. I am not making up or exaggerating any details at all. I'm going to leave out the people's names in grade 10. I will just say that I loved taking, like even in grade 9, 10, 11, 12, even now, I love taking pictures, like sexy pictures. And I don't mean like of my bare boobs and pull, no, I don't do that. I take like, ah, ooh, like ah, uh, like I like to, I've always done that. I've just been very confident in my body, comfortable with my sexuality, just, you know, love the body that I'm in. So I embrace that. But when I was that age, like, in high school, in my early high school years, I would kind of play that up a lot. And when I look back at pictures now, I'm like, oh my God, girl. <laughs> like I said, I never once posted pictures of my boobs or my vagina or of my bum or you know, nothing like that. But I would take like racier pictures, like of cleavage or like, ooh, uh, like, mm, like things like that. You guys know we all, I don't know if we all, but lots of us go through a stage like that. I mean, I, sometimes I feel like I still go through that stage. So I would take pictures like that and post them. There was like this kind of like make your own website and you had your own website. You could add like pages to it. You could put whatever you wanted, name it, whatever. You could be like Justin Bieber page and post a whole bunch of pictures of Justin Bieber or like music. Like you could, you could, it was so cool. I wish they still had it. And you could add friends to it and see their website and you could update it and change it and do layouts and templates. It was amazing. So so I had one and I would, you know, share it to all my friends and it was really cute. I did like, you know, what bands I loved at the moment, like makeup I was loving, trends. Like, I don't know, I just really enjoyed doing that. And a lot of my friends had it as well. And I had a very, very, very close best girlfriend, which again, I'm not gonna say her name, but she was like my best friend ever. No, it wasn't Stacy, because I know like that's my best friend now. And we did everything together and we also took those racy pictures together. Like I was like, ooh, ooh, ah. But she never shared her boobies or no, no places at all on the internet or to anyone in general. Those stages. I have a spot right here from scratching. So I was just updating my web page and putting some new pictures on and not all of my pictures were racy by the way. I had other ones that are just like cute and smiling ones and of other things like that's not just all they took pictures of but I'm just trying to like give you guys a point. So I was looking across of my friends or people that like followed me or whatever it was called and there was this one page called Sexual Dungeon and I'm like what the hell is that? Like usually people's names were like Pretty Pop 101, Follow Up Boy fan page, things like that. So when I saw a Sexual Dungeon following me I was like what the hell so I clicked it and when I clicked it you could add like music to your whole page so when it opened like your whole page was like music and it was like like it was like kind of like racy porn ish music my pleasure room and there was like all this text like this is what I like in bed I like naughty girls I like crazy girls I like huge boobs it was really graphic and then there was like pictures of handcuffs and like obviously ones off Google like whips and chains and all this weird stuff and like fire in the background and like crosses like that cross that's West Coast Choppers logo I saw that and right away I was like oh that looks familiar because one of my best friends uses that a lot like on his binders and everything so I'm like oh that looks a little familiar oh well you know because it was quite a popular thing back then so I'm just scrolling and then there was at the bottom of the page it said click to see my secret dungeon or my secret sex party something along those like sexual lines so I clicked it and when it because you can like add pages to your web page that you can go like I said before so when I clicked it it was like silent there was no music at all the very first picture is of me and I was shocked and I'm like and it was a picture that I took and it was basically I will recreate it for you 
like that. I basically had a zip up men's hoodie on because that's like what I rocked back then and there was like the tiniest amount of cleavage and my head was back like like that almost. Not that this matters but I didn't have breast implants back then. I wasn't really even developed back then and there was added text on the actual picture itself and it said his name sexual pleasure and I went I literally stared at it for probably 10 minutes. That's, that's me and I never wrote, did I write that? No, I never wrote that. Am I going crazy? Am I insane? Did I actually put that on there? I never did that. He wrote that on there, this creator of this website. And I was just shocked. And then I start scrolling and it was basically all of my racier pictures and my best best friends racier pictures all on there. Um, all displayed on there, which I guess would be fine because we posted them so other people can post them and are free to do that as well, I guess. But at the very end of the page, there was, and it took me a while to put two and two together, and I'm looking at it and there is skirt and underwear and like legs kind of open a little bit. And I'm like, that's my skirt, that's my underwear as well. What? I never took that. I would never take that. Okay, wait, am I sure that this is me? So I'm looking at it and I'm, that's me. Like those are my underwear, that's the skirt I wear. There's no doubt about it. And it's like one of those upskirt pictures. I was shocked. I didn't know what to think. So I'm looking and I'm scrolling and there are dozens of upskirt pictures. I didn't wear skirts a lot, but my best friend did. So there were pictures up her skirt, pictures of her boobs covered, but just like just of the boobs, like no face, no anything, almost in like a public setting, like somebody took it. Somebody else took pictures up our skirts and of our boobs and put them on the internet. And I was like, who does this? First of all, I am underage. I think I was about 15. I didn't consent to these pictures. I didn't take these pictures. I didn't know that these pictures were being taken of me. And I promise you 1000% that this is the complete and honest truth. I swear and I promise you. I didn't know what to do. I was young, I was scared because I knew that the other pictures that I took myself were a little bit, you know, not really proper to put on the internet. So when I saw those ones, I'm like, cool. Like I did take these, um, which were completely covered, but I didn't take these and I don't know who did. And then the name on the picture was a name, it's a quite common name, but it's one of my best friends at the time. And it's not somebody that I just saw or hung out with. This is somebody that we walked to school with me and all my, we had about five people who were very close group, me and my best friend. And then like three other people we were very close. like inseparable almost. We like never left each other's side. We walked to school together, hung out all day at school, tried to get the same classes with each other, ate lunch together, walked home together, hung out at night on the weekends. We would constantly be hanging out and talking on MSN. So old school. Which is kind of like texting now, but it's on the computer and you just like kind of type text messages to each other. It's like an online chat type deal if you guys remember MSN. The one person in that group was named and the name that said blank sexual pleasure. And this person always had the West Coast Choppers logo everywhere. MSN profile pic all over his binder in his locker. He would draw it like this was like his symbol almost. So with that name and the symbol everywhere, oh my God, this is like my best friend. Cool. And then when I was closely looking at one of the pictures, the very first picture that I saw of my skirt, I noticed I was looking in the background now that this is the whole mech room, the class that I share with him. I only knew basically him in the class and I sat with him at the table. He sat across from me and that's where the picture was. So he 100% took pictures up my skirt and posted them online without my permission. Can I just say that I'm very glad that I wore underwear? I was completely violated. I felt like there was nothing I could do because, and the only reason was because I didn't have like actual proof it was him. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't his face, but I had all these like clues. So I felt I was hopeless in that way. And as well, because I had racy pictures on there. So will anyone believe me or care that there's even racier ones on there? Do you know what I mean? Like, I hope you guys can understand what I was thinking at that stage. Like, wow, like I do take pictures like this. So is it just allowed? 
for me to get these pictures taken of me and post it all over the internet? No. So I phoned my, my best friend and I told her, I was like, here's the website, go to it. And right away she's like, wow, this seems like blank. And I said, yeah, I know everything. And we were cluing in all together. We were like, yeah, we're the place where she had the boobs all covered. It was like at our friend's house, not that friend, a different friend. She's like, and only these people were there. She told me we're going to the guidance counselor tomorrow because the guidance counselor was very close with us um, because we did lots of fundraising for them and different clubs for the guidance counselor so and I said I don't want to like I'm scared like this is like my my skirt up my skirt I don't want anyone else to see those and she said it doesn't matter we need this to be stopped and I'm so glad I had her because I was terrified so we went the next day right bright and early in the morning we knocked on the guidance counselor told everything we just told you right now she was very supportive and right away she said, I feel like this is a police matter. This can't be happening and you guys did not at all consent to these pictures and this can't be happening in our school because they are, like she said to me, we are actually technically responsible because it's in our facility and it's underage porn being distributed without their knowledge. And I'm like, whoa, like wow, huge red flags everywhere. So she phoned the police station and they took a few hours to get there because it wasn't like an emergency situation. So we went about our classes and I was having really bad anxiety, like such bad anxiety. And then when the police came, this was not a good time whatsoever. So the police came, not exaggerating. Police didn't even sit down. They just came into the room and said, so we have a sexual assault case um, without any physical sexual assault. And I'm like, okay, to anything. So I told him the story again with my friend sitting ne right next to me. He said, oh, well, you know, this poor kid is going to have to go through a lot. And we went, what about us? And he said, How, you don't really have proof that he did it. And I said, call him in here. Call him in here. Because he goes to the school and there's all this proof. Call him in here. So they called him in and basically nothing was said. The police was standing right there and me and my friend were there. And he just had his head down like this the whole time. And I said, why did you do this to us? And he knew immediately what happened. He looked guilty as hell and he did not deny anything at all. He was so apologetic. He said, I'm very sorry. You guys are the only people who are my true friends. So I don't know why I did this to you. I'm so sorry. I have a problem. I have a porn addiction. I actually have a problem that I want to get help for. Like it was, it was quite a sad situation because he was very apologetic. He seemed like crushed by this and even though like so was I and so was my friend I still felt bad because he was like one of my best friends and he was going through so much and when you have a problem it can take over your life and he just he got to his head and he needed help for it and he just was like you know what I'm gonna take everything down I promise and the cops were like okay so just take everything down and it'll be good <laughs> and I said so nothing's gonna be done about this then like people can just do this and then delete it and it'll be fine and then my friend my friend that took the my friend that took the pictures I was asked to leave because he was crying and bawling so he left and it was just the police and us and he said so do you want to file um, a complaint against him or what I forget exactly what he said it was some sort of complaint and I said yes I do because this shouldn't happen it was a violation of my sexual everything and who I am and underage and everything and do you know what he said to me he's gonna have to go down to the station and get fingerprints <laughs> and I just stood there in shock Okay. And he said, you know, it's a pretty traumatic experience for the kid. So my situation doesn't matter. And he goes, you're probably just mad and, you know, fired up from the situation. So if you cool down, you will see that. So I don't feel that this is necessary. And you're going to have to fill out a complaint, like everything in detail of what happened. And I said, okay, let's do it. He just seemed like it was a complete waste of his time. Like this was like nothing at all. It was a complete waste. And I was so distraught. My friend was in tears and I sat down and I wrote in detail everything that happened in a police report. That was my very first police report that I ever filed a witness report or whatever it was called and I filled it out in detail signed it dated it and I gave it to him he goes okay well we'll see what we can do he was never brought down to the station nothing was ever done with the assault or anything like that nothing at all everything was just whatever so we went to his house our friend's house afterwards and he deleted everything he took down the entire page deleted the pictures off his computer and made sure everything was completely wiped but I said how do I know you don't have backups of these He's like I, I don't like I really really don't 
you can look through my entire computer, this is where those pictures were and the website's now deleted. And these types of websites, when you delete them, they're gone. You can't like get them back as if you deleted your Facebook, you can always reactivate it. Wasn't like that. Um, when he deleted the pictures, deleted them out of his trash bin, they were gone, but I still didn't feel at ease. I still felt like violated. I, I felt so hypocritical in that moment and it's for the same reason that this person is taking pictures of me in a sexual way, calling them his sexual dungeon and pictures of my private areas and posting them, but yet I post racy pictures so I felt so hypocritical and it, it was just a horrible, horrible time. And the police officer also said to me, you know, women and girls go through this stage, it's quite normal. Nothing was done with it in the eyes of the law or the school board. Um, I told my parents about it, but my parents basically said if the police didn't do anything about it, then that's all that they can do because you have to trust and rely in the police. So what I'm here today is to tell you guys if there is something that is happening in your life, whether you intended to do something sexual or whether it's just done to you, if you're forced into something, if something is not your consent at all, or if you're just feeling sexually violated, there is always, always some sort of help somewhere. And don't just stop there, because I basically just stopped. And I was like, okay, well, I guess there's nothing I can do. That one police officer, maybe another one would have helped or done something or maybe, you know, got him help or maybe said, you know, there's some programs for you for, you know, porn addiction or sex addiction, counseling of some sort. Maybe somebody would have helped him or maybe helped me because I was already going through a lot of anxiety and depression, as you guys know. So this really put another brick on my castle, if you guys will. There was like no help. Nothing. It was kind of just like, oh well, like, you know, you're, you look like a whore anyway because of your pictures, so what's another whorey picture? That's basically what the cops made me feel like. So I kind of felt hopeless, useless, and I felt like a whore. I did. I was like, wow, like, this is just meant to happen to me if I would have posted these pictures on the internet. That's like what I should get when it's absolutely not. Because you show your body or you show cleavage or you're comfortable in your sexuality doesn't mean you deserve to be raped, sexually assaulted, have pictures taken of you without your consent or anything of that nature that's not what you want. Just because you're dressed in a sexual manner doesn't mean you get to be taken advantage of or assaulted. If you're wearing a full zip-up onesie from head to toe and not showing any skin, you do not deserve to be raped or sexually assaulted. Same with if you are showing it off. That is very controversial because a lot of people think like you're asking for it, but I never asked to be violated in this way. Please look further into it if you are getting no help or no answers. There's always a principal, a guidance counselor, your parents, your aunties, your uncles, your friends, parents, somebody out there is going to help you. You also could phone the police station personally and ask to speak to the sheriff or the constable or the manager or something like that, somebody who can help you further. So don't just take one set of advice from your first advice and then that's good. So I hope this story can help you guys and I love you guys. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Please be safe. The internet can be a very scary place. So just be cautious of what you are posting of yourself and others because if you post something of somebody else or even like photoshopped of somebody else or claim this is somebody else when it's not at all, it's a very serious charge and a lot of people will look past it. And I have in my adult years charged people for online activity. I wish I would have known then what I know now with charging people and taking action because even if somebody lives across the world, you can still do something about it. So just please do not feel like you're hopeless because there is somebody out there who will help you. I love you guys and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye cuties!